Is Ken Jong good or bad for Asian Americans? This recent viral clip has sparked this debate again, and we're gonna try to get to the bottom of it in this video. Let's play the video from ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, you guys saw what happened. The baby ultimately was unaffected, but this small clip, it had nothing to do with racial stereotypes or playing off of them. This sparked a ton of debate in the Next Shark comment section. Some people pro Ken Jong, and some people really, really against him. Right, I mean, and they're basically judging him for his entire career, but mostly probably his character in The Hangover. But anyways, guys, we're gonna be trying to answer the question, is Ken Jong good or bad for Asian Americans? Hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. But you know what is not debated, Andrew? Smala Sauce from Sichuan to Sicily. Get it at smalasauce.com right now um it's interesting to see andrew such a catalytic event I, it was so innocuous but all everybody's feelings come pouring out doesn't that go to show you andrew that in the asian american community people felt some type of way about ken jong for quite some time yeah and i think a lot of people are coming out and i think the number one thing that a lot of people are saying is like man I do like I I don't like Ken Jong's character. He's been an embarrassment to Asians. Obviously, there's people saying, "Oh, he's just being a comedian. He doesn't care. He's just being him, unashamed, unabashedly him." You know, like that's cool to see. And then you know everything in between. So I guess we're gonna get into it. But David, what are your first initial thoughts? Because, uh, you know about this. I mean, my initial thoughts are that Ken Jong is a really interesting character. He's from North Carolina. He's 50 years old. He probably grew up at a whole different time, pre-internet age. And it's like, it's so tough to say because I can see what people are saying when it's like, man, he played a lot off of a lot of negative Asian stereotypes his whole career. But I could also see people saying, man, I'm just such a fan of him because he's so bold and he like twists that stereotype. But I will say this, sometimes people are naturally born a stereotype. Like, not everybody's gonna be small and Bruce Lee beating everybody up. Some people are small and a non-threat, like how you would imagine them, right? So you're and saying- And they, they gotta play into that to, and double down on it and then twist it and be mentally crazy to make a bunch of money because that elicits laughter, right? Because a lot of laughter is like leading the audience on two steps and on the third step, you pull the rug underneath them. So it's kind of like, yeah, I'm small. Yeah, I'm dweeby. But I'm crazy, and the audience all of a sudden is like, oh, I can't understand why I'm laughing so much. Here's a million dollars or 10 of them. Would you, all right, so I guess, let's just say this. Ken Jong, right, short Asian doctor, has a small pee-pee. We all saw that that was his probably biggest strike against him. That's the cardinal sin he committed against Asian men in Hangover, although that scene stole the show. But I guess you're kind of saying that if he is this person, he is a short Asian guy, and he's going to be that short Asian guy no matter where he goes in the globe. If he wanted to go back to career, Korea, South Korea, to have a career, he would have played a short doctor as well. Yeah, they always have that guy on the variety shows in Asia that's either small or fat, and they got to play themselves out for laughter too. Yeah, in Hong Kong, they had that guy, uh, Eric, I think. Right. Uh, yeah, so he's kind of like the short, like goofy guy, right? So he's going to play a short Asian dude anywhere he goes in the world, and that's him as a personality, and he just ended up getting famous for it. People were drawn to him. He's super charismatic. He is funny, but he does, part of him physically just falls into that stereotype. So how much do you blame him for being born or becoming the stereotype, I guess, personality-wise, or do you blame the game, Hollywood, for just giving him the opportunity and him rising to the occasion, right? Right, right, right. How much do you want to blame uh, the short guy from Two Broke Girls? And, you know, obviously uh, a friend of ours, I got a lot of love for him, but shout out to uh, some people have accused Jimmy O. Yang of the same thing, too. Yeah, debate. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, like playing, like, little... Fobby dweeby characters, but then with an edge. And that's mm. what made them rich, right? Right, and that's what flips the character, right? Very interesting. But I guess uh, we're going to go into the comment section, then we'll give you our own takeaways at the end because I have my own ranking for positive representation, and we will see where Ken Jong falls in it. Um, basically, this was a bunch of comments. FKJ, that POS sellout. He's been a walking cliche caricature, toxic stereotype his whole life, et cetera, et cetera. This was mostly from guys. Yeah. Probably and what, straight, uh, straight then, Asian dudes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then other guys were like, man, I just like that he degaff. He got that dog in him. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Some people said, you guys need to lighten up. Not everybody got to be serious, okay. y'all. So this also came from a lot of straight guys. How come there's these two opposing perspectives? All right, so I feel like the two perspectives are really interesting because on one side, 
I think, to be honest, a lot of East Asian men, Chinese and Korean guys, and we come from a very, like, shameful culture, like a shame culture. Like, we feel shame a lot. That's part of, like, the Confucian culture, whatever you want to say, right? No, that's this almost holding yourself to these, like, ultra-serious standards, yeah. right? And they connect to Ken Jong as a proxy representation of who they are. Right, because they're like, no, he's a Korean doctor, and he's making all the Asians look bad by acting like this weird character in Hangover who's like a pervert and has a small pee-pee and is just goofy, and I hate that character. That was a bad representation for Asian men. And then, on the flip side, you got other Asians whom, I'm not going to say that they're all like more like Southeast Asian guys, but I feel like they're more so that they're just like, shit, that's an Asian guy who just like doesn't care. He's acting wild because like, let's say I was born into that body. I might act like that mm. because Ken Jong is charismatic. He's not scared and to be himself and he's not scared to like run naked around in a movie. Right, now right, right. him running naked, you can say again, hurt Asian guys. Right? You're kind of like, oh, why well, you got to have a small pee pee. But I guess what you'd expect from a 5'4 doctor. Honestly, I could see it from both sides, but I almost want to say I more agree with the second opinion where it's like, man, if you're going to get born like that, which it is what it is when you're born into that archetype, that game character, we, right. we don't get to control what game character in this like League of Legends game we're born into, right? So, do with, so I'm almost like, man, you got to just maximize and double down as that. Although I could see the flip side of being like, just hide in the shadows. You're not representing us. I, I think the X factor and how you feel about it between the two opinions is going to depend on how you see celebrity representation. Now, I have a lot of friends who don't really care about Asian representation as much. Like, they're not as tuned oh, in. Oh, especially our Southeast Asian yeah. friends growing up back in the hometown. They, they do not be tapped into it at but all. But if you're super tapped in, you feel like every strike against Asians is a strike against you. So now if you disconnect yourself, it's not going to hurt as bad. But if you do want to ride the wave and be like, yo, I'm, I'm with Asian representation. It affects my life. Then yes. Yeah, right? you're right. You're right. The personal position depends a lot because there's a lot of Chinese actors that were older around Ken Jong's age that I know were really mad at him because he was playing Chinese Vietnamese characters. Right. But that's like a whole different concern that would only be uh, you would only relate to if you were almost like in the same industry. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I feel like our opinion on this to be at Donis does matter a little bit because we are Asian guys in the media field. Right, right, like, right. Like, I've been, we've lived in LA. We know, like, we've met Ken Jong before. You've, you know, like... Yeah, we, we, we are one foot in, one foot out, which yeah. gives our perspective, to be honest, it's pretty balanced, right? Yeah, I feel like our opinion does matter because, trust me, like, if it benefited or hurt us, like, I would say it. Um, this person said Asian men hate when Asian women are promoted who give them a bad image. So let's call out this Asian man for the same reasons for intentionally making his own race look like a ste stepping mat. I yeah. mean, it's tough, man. People from his generation, one of the best ways to come up was to kind of like sell out or play the submissive role. Every race went through it, Andrew. A lot of uh, militant African-Americans, they're not happy with the way uh, Sammy Davis Jr. rep being black either. Right. You know what I mean? But, there, but it was a process to uh -huh. get to more people who are like, uh, uh, obviously, RIP, like Chadwick Boseman or like Denzel yeah. and things like that. Yeah, I just feel like if he never did the Hangover series, this wouldn't be as much of a debate. But then he did Senor Chang, too. and then like Senor Chang, yeah, he kind of got beat up a little bit in that, but it wasn't as racial as... As Hangover. I think Hangover is the biggest sin that he did. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because he And like, character. now that. The character is hilarious. It by is the a way. hilarious. But it, it did make, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say yeah. like, oh, I'm one of those Asian dudes and not affected. But the character made me cringe a little bit. But, but I want to, I want to turn back the clocks of time because David, we've actually seen Ken Jong's um, stand up comedy clips from so many years ago. From Comic View. From Comic View. We're talking about 10, 12 plus years ago. Guys, I've seen Ken Jong perform or at least on TV. We met Ken Jong yeah. like, for the first time 12, yeah, years, 12 ago. years ago right and this was right after comic view i'm gonna play this clip and you tell me if seeing this 15 years ago how you might have felt play the clip three two one so i think in this clip ken jong seemed kind of like a cool representation because he's like acting like a crazy doctor you could got say the tumor on the west side yeah, you could say it's cringy now but trust me at the time this comedy was hilarious this was gut busting laughter and you would say he's trying to break stereotypes by being this loud mouth crazy small asian doctor right 
Now, this clip, you would overall, a lot of people were like, oh, positive. And then you fast forward to Hangover and you're like, oh, now that hurts me. And then now his character. Do you, think, do you think it has to do with the style of humor? And maybe when he was on Comic View, it was almost like, yeah, look at this little Asian guy repping us like in a crazy way to the black crowd. But then it was almost like when he did the white movie, damn, he just played himself like a little dick. You know what I mean? Yeah, like docile, yeah, yeah, yeah. submissive person. It, it is place and context. Context and time does matter. Even though to me, his character hasn't, him as a per person and character and performer hasn't changed that much. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say this. And I heard uh, the times that I met Ken Jong, he was really, really nice to me. Way nicer than some other people that were way snobbier to me. But uh, I will say this. He does play into the white gaze a lot, a bit, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Um. Somebody said I he's agree. like Will Ferrell. They both try too hard to be funny. It comes across as insincere. So that's sort of like somebody saying, man, yeah, he gets laughs, but it's unsophisticated laughs. Okay. That, I think that's, there's different levels Dude, of comedy. There's so I many agree. different types of humor. And I what's funny to you that. is funny to me. There's hipster humor. There's Harvard humor. There's like just baseline stereotype humor, which to be honest, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Ken John plays off of a lot, which is very primal and you don't necessarily need to be educated, but that's a whole nother video. Somebody said there's a process for everything. These, this generation served as a step stool so other Asians could get into the industry. How mm -hmm. much is this true? Like, he's 50. He's from North Carolina. Back in the day, Andrew, America was all white, all black, especially North Carolina like that. The Heritage Americans. He, he's setting it up for people to have more of these Russell Peters or more, well, I don't know, who knows if we'll have an Asian Matt Rife, but, like, the more multifaceted things. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's interesting to think, like, once Ken Jong retires or steps away from the limelight, is that short Asian character ever going to exist again? Is someone else going to take his place? Is it going to be evolved? Probably, though. It's maybe not have the same, like, they're not going to play the exact same character. But, I mean, there's a lot of short Asian guys out there, let's be honest. And a lot of them want to get put on. Right. And, and make millions make it, of dollars, right? And make yeah. it in entertainment. And some of them are funny. And some of them will end up playing some character like this. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that the gap in entertainment in society to confirm a stereotype but play with it in an edgy way mm. with an edgy twist will always be there but i just hope that other archetypes can be more monetizable as well right. um i think ultimately man my takeaway is that like this is gonna, some people gonna be not happy with this answer i'm i'm gonna give him on a scale of negative five to positive five on the representation scale i'm gonna give him a spectrum of negative one to positive 1.5 wow that is my spectrum that i'm giving ken wow. jong wow and some people can say, oh, that's I don't a like little it. bit positive. I think a lot of people are going to say, oh, why isn't he negative three or negative four out of five? Yeah. I mean, I'll say this to be honest, for me, I never related to being a really small Asian guy like that. Mm. So it really wouldn't, like, I, I was like, oh man, he's going to, he's going to be in You that didn't lane feel so like strong. he represented you. If anything, I'm more mad at Hollywood for not putting the opposite on rather than just putting it on. It's like, I'm more mad at the game than I'm mad at the player because I understand the motivations of a player as a professional performer myself. How, you want to have money. You want to be accepted. You want to have a place in this game and you want to have a Hollywood star and all these things. But at the same time, yes, did he, like, did the game almost like prop him up? A little bit extra, even though he wasn't fully positive Asian male representation. Yes, but at the end of the day, I could also see why he's like, as a comedian, it's not fully my concern. Right. As long as I'm good to Asian people in my personal life. But it's tough to say, though. That's why I gave it a potential negative one, too. Yeah, uh, here's how I look at things. I, I, I put people in tiers and categories. Uh, there's four different levels of category when it comes to positive representation. At the bottom... There is the villain and the embarrassment, okay? These characters are like Long Duck Dong, Esther Ku, the comedian who kind of got famous for ragging on Asians and Asian guys, and William Hung. These are people who unfortunately constantly get used as examples. What about the dude, dude from Two Broke Girls? Two Broke Girls, sure, yeah. I think he's in this tier where it's like people, Asians do not want to see this character again. And there's almost nothing positive that you can draw from that. Do not, I do not yeah. wish I was born yeah. into this. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the next tier up is debated but accepted. And this is where Ken Jong sits, Bobby Lee sits, probably Constant Wu. And like these are people who are accepted in the Asian sphere and did something, but ultimately people are always going to debate whether they're good and bad or positive, negative, right? Plus but one, minus one. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, they're positive, you know, like they're they've added something to the game. They're kind of funny. They've had some good performances, but they got some strikes against them, clearly. Embrace. This is the next level. This is where most positive Asian actors are, where they've done something good. 
maybe nothing incredible, incredible, but they're positive people of the community. Steven Yoon, Daniel Day Kim, John Cho. I would put Jackie Chan in there, even though Jackie Chan is like a global legend, but Margaret Cho, Ali Wong, Henry Golding. The only reason why I put Jackie Chan is there. Did I feel, he lose his hero status? Yeah, I feel like some people kind of debate it because they're like, oh, he kind of like, oh, Jackie Chan, that's a stereotype, oh, you know? Because you're saying he, that some people said that he was goofy in his American roles, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, But then hero icon level, only a few sit here. Bruce Lee, Jeremy Lin, these are guys who achieve something so globally amazing that it's almost... You cannot debate. I, I, I would their say status. for a moment, for a moment, Chloe Kim and Sunisa Lee. Yeah, Naomi gold also. winners, Olympic gold winners. For a moment, they get that shine where it's like they can do no wrong. Ooh, you know, it's like um, a god on earth. Right, right, of. right. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you made me say timeless, uh, speaking, uh, Bruce Lee. No, Barry. it's true. When you go to Sunset Boulevard, even in 2023, and you ask people to name Asians, they still be like Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan. That's like yeah, what yeah. most people say. To be honest, Lucy Liu. Uh, um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, I mean, guys, you let us know in the comments down below what you think about Ken Jong. We kind of gave our takes. Like I said, he's accepted, debated in person. He's a really nice and supportive guy. Super nice to all different types of people. Um, but yes, I think his biggest, biggest strike is the Hangover series. And if he hadn't done that, I think the narrative around Ken Jong is a little bit different. How much is it more just the society that we live in? If a lot of people feel that Asians are small, weak, and quiet, and then all of a sudden you see somebody who looks small, weak, and quiet, but then they flip it on you and they're, they're brash and they're sort of like bombastic and that creates all the laughter, should we be mad at that person who fills that role? Or should we be mad that society rewards people for being 75% stereotypical and 25% anti-stereotypical like that that's a heavily rewarding let, archetype. Let me tell you this. there's other people who are cut against the stereotype from the beginning like eddie huang or something like that and that can be rewarded in another way but it's almost like you everybody's got a jujitsu what pre-exists in the society so are we mad at the person who did the jujitsu wing or, or, or was able to do that or are we mad at the society that it only gave like one or two options david i don't know the answer to that question but i can feel that a lot of people are just glad that it's over that that character probably is not going to happen again. No, it's too and, woke in 2023. And that we're probably evolving and moving on from that point. So perhaps Ken Jong is a stepping stone for progress, unfortunately, an unfortunate stepping stone, maybe a reluctant stepping stone. I don't know how you want to see it, but at least we're past that character now. I yes, think so. yes, 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 yes. So anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below what you think about Dr. Ken Jong. Uh, and until next time, we out. Peace.